Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So in today's video we'll be talking about that northeast snowstorm and the southern snowstorm that occurred already across the south, but we'll be looking at the snowfall totals that are left behind, how much snow is still to come across the northeast, and then for the majority of the video we'll be talking about the long range pattern. What's to come in terms of snowstorms, rain, the temperatures, whether the cold air will stick around or not. So if you guys would like to consider uh, sticking around, and before we do, if you'd like to support this channel, subscribing works great. Uh, hitting the thumbs up button also helps out a lot. If not, hopefully uh, I could at least provide a bit of useful information. Otherwise, let's get into this. I do want to say one thing quickly before I start this video. Usually I like to upload these videos a bit earlier than today. The reason for today's late upload is because I just finished taking a uh, math exam, a very tedious two-hour math exam. So, uh, I do apologize that it's a bit late, and I do apologize if I also am just a bit fuzzy, because my brain power is a bit used up. Okay, let's start off by looking at the interactive radar. Notice, obviously, indicated, we have an indicator of very cold air, and that's just, well, look at that. Snow across very far to the south, across Texas, reaching into portions of Mexico. And let's run this radar back a few hours. It is uh, taking a bit for it to load. And uh, it's happen what's happening right now is what's happening to my brain. It's not wanting to load. <laughs> All right. I'm noticed that there was quite a bit of snow. If you if you recall yesterday in my live stream, if you could have, if you watched it, I was talking about how there could have been a resurgence of snow that could catch people off guard. I don't know if it caught people off guard, but there was a resurgence of snow across southern Texas that did drop quite a bit of snow. I think there were some six inch plus amounts, especially across the mountainous areas of Mexico and uh, portions of extreme southern Texas. Right. Notice across the northeast, um, very heavy snow that just moved off the coast within the last few hours, but light snow remains. It's stretching all the way back into Chicago, Michigan, southern Canada, and it is still ongoing, and there is still a bit of snow expected to fall additionally across the northeast. Notice that, right, it's really light snow, nothing too heavy, but it's there. Additional rain falling across the southeast, which has been drenched with heavy rain. They do not need that. The north does not need any more snow. Texas does not need any more snow. Everyone's getting what they don't need. The west is getting snow and ice and rain, so that's definitely good for those locations that need it, uh, the dry locations. And you can see that a lot, of, a lot of snow is definitely falling and pretty far inland into Oregon, sorry, Oregon, Idaho, Washington, Montana, and also the rain is moving into Northern California, so that's definitely a bit of a good news as they are very dry, but, uh, you know, probably not enough to break the trout, but you know, step by step, hopefully. Let's take a look at the accumulated snowfall reports or what people reported. And notice we have a very large area across Indiana, Illinois, Ohio that got really under three inches, but over an inch. So one to three inches, right? Notice across Tennessee, Kentucky, generally between the four to six inch range, there were a few amounts that did get up to um, right around six inches across Kentucky. Again, uh, yesterday I mentioned several times I would not be surprised to see several locations see six inches across Kentucky, Tennessee based on how heavy the snow is falling, and it did happen. Um, not as widespread as I would think, but still um, a bit higher than what the National Weather Service was saying. What we do have is a very uh, heavy band of snow that did set up uh, probably early today in the morning. I do not do not know exactly when, but you can see that it fell to the north of Philadelphia, and if you recall, yesterday I was con uh, kind of concerned that New York City may end up seeing the rain snow line kind of shift into their locations. That did not happen. Um, at least for the most part, the amounts were uh, unaffected by snow. And if they were affected, it wasn't, uh, sorry, unaffected by rain. If it was affected, it wasn't by the rain. It was probably by some other factor. Look at that. Trenton got absolutely hammered by this little band or area surrounding Trenton, right? Um, 8.5. 10 inches, 8.5, uh, so definitely good amounts. Philadelphia, uh, if you recall yesterday, I was saying that, again, you'll probably be on the southern flank of the heavy versus light amounts, and you seem to have gotten the short end of the stick. But, again, a lot of these reports are a bit old. If you were to take a look at right there, that is from when? 10 to 52 a.m., and you can see that the higher ones are a bit more updated. So I would say, based on what I'm seeing with the more recent report falls, for um, three to six inches, um, though definitely there were some two-inch amounts, especially as it got towards farther south into New Jersey. Maryland, Washington, D.C., you guys got duped again. Um, again, I was, you know, fearing that that would happen, and it seems as if, uh, that was the case. You can see 
an inch or two fell across the DC area. Not amounting, uh, not amounting too much, but notice that Maryland, right? Not bad amounts. Northern Maryland, I, you know, I said that you'll be well away from the rain to the line, and you definitely got no that decent snowfall. Uh, the northeast, further, you know, into more of a new. New England rather than just the Northeast, Boston, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont. You will still see a bit of snow from this, but it hasn't really fallen yet. It hasn't really picked up. Uh, notice that there were some pretty good amounts, right? Five inches right there, and that was mainly from that very heavy snow band that was occurring very early on in this radar time lapse. You can see right there. I mean, that was that was quite quite some heavy snow falling, and now it has dwindled, right? But you can see still moisture is hanging on. And if we were, I do want to say. Quickly, looking at the snowfall reports, I know you probably may be tired of this. Not bad amounts across Alabama and into Mississippi, right? There was a 12-inch amount. But look at this. Um, that's pretty far to the south. This, look. Look, Little Rock, 11 inches, right? I mean, that's quite incredible. Uh, that is uh, really, really just something you you don't see on a annual or even a decade basis across the uh, Arkansas area. Look at that. Gurdon, Arkansas, two-day storm total. 21 inches that is a lot that is a lot today snow total uh, snow tor uh storm total 11 inches and then further right there across the south in texas that was mainly from that secondary band of snow that remember i said it could occur at san antonio got some more snow austin into portions of western texas uh really did not affect the dallas area okay let's take a look at the radar or sorry let's take a look at the uh the progression of the remaining part of the system. So let's take it out to the model run. The RAP, a high res model that I really like to look at. And look what we start seeing, right? This is pushed off shore, at least you may think it is. But look what, start ha look what starts happening. We start seeing the rain start pivoting onto the northeast coast with some snow showers. And they're actually pretty strong. You can see that additional several inches across New York City, Long Island are not out of the question. So if you're at four inches, you know, you could get up to six inches. And look at that. This is at around 6, 7 o'clock tomorrow, 8, 9, 10, 11. Still affecting portions of Boston tomorrow well into the afternoon. Heading to, this is at this point, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. You know, this is now Saturday. Finally moving out. For it looking like this, right now it seems that this would be out within a few hours. But, you know, this just sticks around and kind of pivots a lot of moisture back in so just be prepared for some light snow and that is out of here additional total snowfall should not be really nothing too incredible but there will be probably pockets up to additional four or five inches sorry about that squeaky chair especially towards the boston area vermont new hampshire and portions of maine okay all right so let's take a look now at the long range pattern so again i said we'll be talking about this in a majority of this video let's begin talking about it if you've been Waiting, I apologize, but let's get into this. We have that system push away. We do have that system right now across the west. You can see that moves in. That is going to seemingly dissipate, but it acts as a potential snowstorm across the Midwest. Doesn't look too significant, but it's snow nonetheless. Snow, freezing rain a bit across north central Illinois into Missouri, uh, Indiana, Arkansas. Some light rain occurring. And as we continue pushing this into the future, you would notice that we see this uh, not really evolve into anything big, more of just like a straight precip event across the northeast, rain, the snow occurring. And then as we push this out, that kind of does strengthen and that's something to watch for. There may be a potential nor'easter starting to try to develop out of that, so we'll definitely have to monitor that. Um, you can see the winds get pretty strong. It doesn't seem to be too significant, but it's, you know, nonetheless warranting some sort of a watchful eye. Again, this is just one model, right? The European, and you can still see that um, obviously no more or a polar vortex there is present. And really, the the main reason we could see that is well, finally rain across the south. You know, it's not falling as snow or or ice or sleet. And while it's still still maybe chilly, at least it's not rain. Look at the European model shows at around a week from uh, today. So more snow across the west. Obviously, that's where it originates from. And look, it develops a line of snow rain across the northeast and. That does, uh, according to this model, develop into a pretty large nor'easter and move off into the coast, and the European begins to develop another large system. So, the European uh, shows system potential, but it doesn't really develop into anything significant, either of them. So, the snow amounts, you may be looking at this and you'll be like, wow, spring is definitely here. Again, um, you know, uh, yes, it's obviously decreased, the snow amounts are forecasted, and 
what we see in typically, you know, late January. It's already you know, towards late February into early March. But I do want to warn you, this is just one model, and the European has been kind of jumping around quite a bit, a bit more than I would like. If you're to take a look at the version 16 um, GFS from the new model run, this is what it showed. You can see um, not that much snow across the north, but definitely a large system across this mid-Atlantic and into the south, so that's something that uh, some models are pointing at. But with the newest model run upgrade from uh, just a few hours old, you can see this is what it shows. So still decent snow mounts, and again, um, you know, six, seven inches. We're not uh, seeing any more of those purple, high purple colors, 18 inches, but more still heavy but more realistic amounts of snow okay guys i'll probably have to cut this video a bit short because i am just feeling really really weak and i am i'm like a falling asleep so um i will go through some more of these models and probably call it a day so notice that the canadian gdps in terms of total snowfall it does show a bit more aggressive with that midweek system and then look it starts flourishing this large system from the south and again that's what most models are favoring Right, these big systems, 12, 16, 15 inches across the north. Um, this one centers the heaviest snow across the Midwest. The west itself gets quite a bit of snow. That's the Canadian, right? If I were to take a look at the GFS itself, a very good model that we like to look at, this snowfall goes out to 384 hours. And let's turn on the Kuchera. You can see it does show a lot of snow, mainly into southern Canada. Look at that, Minneapolis potentially 12 inches, uh, Green Bay over 6 inches, Duluth over 12 inches, and into the northeast. So definitely a, uh, an active pattern. And just to demonstrate for you how this could be pretty active, look at this. So we have these weather models pulled up. By the way, I wanted to show you this earlier, but I forgot. Um, notice that this is what the National Weather Service thinks will fall additionally across the northeast with the system that is going on right now. Right, some seven inch amounts, especially across Boston, are possible. I wouldn't say it's you know high confidence, especially in how this system kind of performed across the south, uh, further south. You know, it dropped heavy snow amounts where it wasn't supposed to, and dropped lighter amounts where it wasn't supposed to either. So uh, definitely a bit of variance. The west also picking up a bit of snow, and then notice uh, into the long range, according to the GFS members, this is just a mid Atlantic look. All of them show those pink colors, which is still ind indicative of heavy snow. So the heavy snow threat is definitely still there. We'll just have to keep an eye on this. And for now, uh, again, that is it for today's video, guys. I am sorry, but I am feeling really weak. I don't think I'm sick or anything. I'm just uh, really exhausted, to say the least. So this is the Mid-Atlantic. Uh, if I were to look at the Northeast region, we would see that there is... Uh, let's wait for this to load. We would see that there is definitely more of the snow kind of targeting the area into southern Canada. Snowstorms kind of start small, but they grow big across the northeast. And look at that, right? Not bad amounts across the northeast into upstate New York and southern Canada. While you may be, you know, preparing for spring, this is through the 6th of March. And look at, look at how much snow some of these locations could get. Portions like uh, this model advertises southern Canada getting over 2 feet. And uh, most models show... Pennsylvania, ups in New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, still getting over 12, 18 inches of snow. All right, um, that is basically it for today. Uh, thank you so much, and I'll catch you all guys in the next episode. See ya.